Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sweet Reality Kenya TV. Today on Sweet Reality Kenya TV, we want to discuss a very pertinent issue, a very current issue, church donations. Church donations. Donations to churches. What should we do? There has been a very big debate about it. Bishops are told not to allow people to donate uh, money in churches. Some leaders say they have to donate. Now, how do we know the difference? Who is donating and is it the best thing to do? With us here is our panelist, Pastor Habil Were. Karibu sana, Pastor Habil Were, to our today's show. Okay, thank you, my friend, and uh, the one who is hosting me. Thank you for having me, my friend and brother. Isaiah Otieno, hosting me here. I want to say thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Karibu mm -hmm. to Sweet Reality Kenya TV. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've just brought the subject. What would you say about church donations, Pastor? Well, church donations is mean somebody imagining that he or she is going to donate in church. He should have in his mind that it has to be unto God, not unto people. Because when we talk about church donation, maybe we talk we are talking about helping the widow or the orphans or building or Vulnerable. the project and so on. But all in all, the center, the center of attraction should not be the giving or the the, the, the need there or the project, it should be God, because church means the house of God. And this being important, it is of great also, or great importance, that people see God and not fail to see Him. In other words, one should not fail to acknowledge God when He is bringing any offering or any donation. If He fails, it means He is there for nothing. If he fails to give donations. If he fails to acknowledge God, who is the owner of the church, if he does not recognize him, then his donation or giving is useless. I get it. I'm, I'm getting that. Everything should be for the glory of God. You see? And to fail to acknowledge God and then you bring that offering is, is an insult. You see? It is an insult. God should be number one before we think of doing anything. Before we think of donation, God should be number one. How, how then do we acknowledge God, Pastor? Because here is somebody who wants to contribute to the church. And the church is the house of God. Uh, now, is it not uh, an acknowledgement? Now, number one. The giving or the gift or the donation is not as important as God, one, and the giving, the donation is not important than the one that is giving. So, the one that is giving also should be somebody that God has accepted first before the donation. In other words, if somebody has not been yet accepted by God, his abomination is useless, is nothing, is an insult. Because imagine, hello, I am important than what I give God. So if I give God something and I've not given myself, you see, it means I've decided to insult God with something very little and I stay away. If you give God and you've not given yourself. If you give God and you've not given yourself, you have insulted God by remaining with yourself and giving God what is cheap. Am I clear? No, I'm not getting that point. You have failed, you have given God and you have not given yourself. Yes. Let's that, say. That, that means what, all that you had, you have given it to God. 
Now, let's see. This phone is expensive. It is 10,000. Okay? And this one is 800. This mask. Okay? Now, if I give you this mask and I remain with this, whom do you think I value most? You or I myself? Me as God or me as Utien. An example, you let now we are me coming down. You as Utien. I would appreciate this because I don't have the 800 shillings mask and I know the phone is yours and you also need it. Now, would I not say that I love myself more than I love you? So I've given you less and I've remained with the precious one. Yeah. It means I love myself than I love you. But now you see, God is more important than myself, isn't it? Than anything else, isn't it? So God requires that before I give anything, I give myself the precious one. Yeah, okay, okay. I am now more precious. Yeah. Yes, yes. You, you give point. yourself to God. Yes. Uh -huh. If you deny yourself God, it means you are trying to tell God you are very cheap. Yes. I'm going to give you this cheap. I'm not going to give myself. I'll give thee. It's an insult. Yeah, I get the point. And that is why it is written here in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. You see? The sacrifice of the wicked. Yes. Is an abomination to the Lord. You see? So, the wicked should change by coming back to God for forgiveness, to repent. Then, his sacrifice is no longer abomination. It is acceptable. Even Jesus would not want me to go and give an offering in church if I, I have an issue with someone. He says, go back, leave, leave, leave it, leave it. Go back and resolve. You see, when you have an issue with your wife, with your husband, somebody whom you have refused to forgive, finish with him, make your relationship with other people right, and then you can come and give the offering, the sacrifice. But so in short, you're saying there's no need of doing good things out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you're doing wrong things out there, and then you come uh, before God and uh, pretend to give. Mm. God requires a good relationship first. He does not want anything more than us. It's like, for instance, when I preach the gospel, I, I am not looking for anything from people. It is very bad if a preacher is preaching, but he is preaching and his aim is to the pockets of the people. The preacher should be a soul winner. So that if someone is saved, that which is impossible is the soul being given to God. It becomes very easy for any other thing to follow. So we should not put eh, the cat before the horse. The horse should be ahead before the cat. Pull it. To pull it. So you are sold first. Your relationship with God first. We can go back even to your house. You are not in good terms huh, with your wife. Do you think you will enjoy that food? If you are not able to tell your wife, I am sorry for what I have done for you. Forgive me. Do you think any other thing will happen right, sweet, right, eh? in reality, if you cannot dare tell her, I'm sorry? In other words, relationship is more important than anything we offer to ourselves. You reconcile first before you even go uh, before God. Yes. Now, what about these people who uh, maybe are a lady? even leaves her husband without giving her breakfast because that day uh, she's the one on duty to go and serve pastor in church mm -hmm. yeah here is where many people don't know that your house should be first the family you should treat your husband well huh? 
If you can't, out there you are a hypocrite. Let me come and put it like this. If you cannot relate with human being, right, how is it possible that you can relate with God? How can you love God whom you don't see? And how can you love God? Who, and the one whom you can see, you don't want to love that person. So there are certain things that should be first before others fall. So when it comes to donation or giving, God desires our relationship should be first. Good. Are you going to repent and then give? Okay. Yes. Are you going to relate with other people, right? And then... You, 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 you relate with God or you will ignore people and then claim to love God. That is what is called hypocrisy. Mm. Now we were on politicians, uh, Pastor. Those who give donations to churches. We have uh, realized here that uh, uh, the donations of a wicked person is an abomination. How then as a politician do I know I'm wicked? Okay, this issue of uh, being wicked or not it's something that is between you and God. You see? One, a, a politician coming, we should understand that there is a motive. This motive is just to get votes. It's not necessarily doing good. Because the reason why I say so is because he will not do it secretly. He will want everybody to see. Now, if he is really doing it for God, why not just put in an envelope and give and somebody does not know who has done it. But when they want recognition, it means their reward is not from God, they want a reward from people, which is votes. And God does not honor our good works when we want rewards from people. And so this should be corrected, that if a politician comes, if he is really in good relationship with God, then his sacrifice, his offering, his donation should not be public. It should be secretive. You see, do not do anything good to be praised by men. So if people come to church and they want people to praise them, they are sinning in church. Because God does not desire that we do things for people to praise us. You, we make that donation so sacred that it is between me and God. I have come to church. I have not gone to another place to raise uh, where they are raising funds. It is in church. Now, when it is in charge, it should be so much sacred that it should not be known who has done this. Now, taking the Kenyan scenario, where people choose you because they see you and they see what you are doing. Mm -hmm. If you do your donations in secrecy, how will this help you? Because you also need the votes anyway. It is very, very important that we should not be taking politics in church. Because there, there are also people who want to vote for somebody else. Now, when we bring these things in church, we are dividing. A pastor or a bishop who allows a preacher to bring politics by a giving donation in a, in a political attitude or motive, he is dividing the church. Because not all people want to vote for that person. That's why. Pastor, we, do you know there are some churches that only develop during uh, election year in uh, videos that they just wait. I know it's almost election time, and this time we must get somewhere to help us do this and that. The church is built only at election year in times. Otherwise, all those people, the politicians, go to Nairobi and stay there. Nobody develops the church, and maybe the populace around uh, is very poor, so they depend on these people. How then would you tell this uh, this pastor or this church that we should shun this uh, welcoming these politicians into the church? Now, everybody is welcome in the church. See? Anybody is welcome. But what they do 
can affect the church in a negative way, can poison the church or edify the church. And that is why preachers are told not to allow politics in church because politics is a dirty game. You see, and if I care for the souls, I am a shepherd, and these souls we call them a sheep. We should give. We should lay our lives for the sake of the sheep. Now, if we are selling the truth, whereby giving should not be something for displays that we may be praised by human beings. If we ignore that truth, we sell that truth because we consider money is more important than that truth. We are not serving God. We are serving our stomachs. We are serving our gain. Can we support that by the Bible that uh, we are not supposed to bring politics into church, bring politicians into church? Because in the same Bible, uh, when Jesus was confronted about uh, Caesar and, uh, and God, he said, give Caesar what belongs to him and God what belongs to him. Where then do we take these politicians? Now, taxes are different and they are not supposed to be done in church. After we've finished church, they can go outside there and do the politics, not in the church. So that when people see the politics, they hear politics, they are not hearing politics in the church. The church purpose, the purpose of the church is to build people's relationship with God and man. It's not for for bringing in secular politics and, and other things that are not to be. That is why Jesus had to kick away those people who are doing what? Who are who doing are trading business, in church. who are trading in church. So you see, business can be done, but outside the church. Outside the church. Yeah. Yeah. You can do all those marketing, you are marketing yourself so that people may vote for you outside the church. But when it comes to in the church, it is kingdom business which is not for profits like uh, profit gain like like politicians want votes and i think uh, our former president uh, the late daniel Roti sharap moe used to do that very well he goes to church after prayers that is when he addresses people out of the church uh, out of the church building mm -hmm. yes i think that was a good respect then from your statement so that people know this donation uh, or that is maybe for marketing yourself, you don't abuse the church. You don't misuse the church by bringing in uh, politics, political gain or seeking votes in the church. That is abuse and Jesus will drive such people out of the church using a whip. I believe he, that <laughs> whip must have landed on people, not only on cows. <laughs> Could you now advise our Kenyan politicians on the same, because it happens. What can you tell the politicians, the Kenyan politicians to do, now that we are gearing into an electioneering period? Talk to them. Well, I think to for the church and God's people not to speculate uh, why you are doing this. You should really honor God a politician should really honor God by making sure if he goes to church and wants to give something, he should do it not for praises of people in the church, but for God only. Number two, if you give more than you are earning, you are making people to ask, where did you get this money? Outsiders will say, you stole this money or you rob the people. So you see, instead of allowing your goodness to be evil spoken of, make sure that you are wise enough not to parade the giving when you bring it in church. You see, there are some politicians who have been evil spoken of, that they are corrupt, that they want votes in church, and I see this is very wrong because they are bringing it in church and these things that are good let's say let's say they are just good people okay the bible says do not allow your goodness to be evil spoken of 
Okay. Yes. So it is proper if you want it to be blessed by God, do not allow your goodness to be evil spoken of. Okay. Because if there is anything people should speak evil of, mm -hmm. it is righteousness. You don't care. You don't care when it comes to when it comes to preaching. Mm -hmm. But when it's something you can do secretly, you can do it so that people will not praise you. Woe unto you when you do good things that you may be praised by man. Is it fasting? Is it a sacrifice? Is it giving? What is this you are doing good? Avoid people praising you. Because when they praise you, they have, you have already gotten your reward. And when you go before God, God will say, don't do so that you may gain praise. You have gotten that. Viewers, don't do good things expecting praises. Do not do whatever you do, do not do it for praises. But do it for the sake of God and do it like you belong uh, before God, right? As unto God. As unto God. Also, make sure you are hurt. You have you have got no grudge with somebody. If you if you cannot forgive anybody, don't give. Don't give. Mm. If if somebody is you have an enemy, who you see these people they come even in church and, and talk evil of another one. I am the one you should vote for me. So and so is like this. If you have that kind of attitude, don't give because when you give and you hold grudges and you sneer at other people, your sacrifice, your donation is not accepted and you cannot be blessed. I hope we are well led now, uh, viewers. This is Sweet Reality Kenya TV, and we are at the Pigeon Hall restaurant at uh, Kiserian Kahuho area. That is where we do much of our interviews. and. Uh, I have been with uh, Pastor Habil Were on today's show just to tackle that issue because it is a pertinent issue now, especially now that we are getting into the election time. Thank you, Pastor, for coming. Thank you for coming. Enjoy it. God bless. You.